green man. He's trying to be AVE. His captions are way too fast and I don't get his puns. He's making something you can just buy on Alibaba. He's trying to make a clickbait video. Alright guys, when he walks past, we'll get him. Fellas, how's it going? Hey, come on, man. What if I apologized? Sorry, it's too late. Well, I think it's safe to say I probably have too much fun making videos. Before I get started, I just want to say this video was made possible by Masso CNC controllers, so thanks a lot, Masso. So, this is my fancy new um, Colt Single Action Army Elastic Band Shooting Revolver. Uh, the story here is that uh, at work we decided to do a group costume, me and my team, I'm on the, the testing team, and uh, we have we have a lot of fun. So we decided to do a group costume this year, we decided to do the Wild West. I wanted to go as an old prospector, so I did. Uh, but I figured uh, with all the gold I probably have, I probably want to keep it safe, so I'm going to need a period accurate, uh, let's call it weapon. To, uh, to keep it safe. I remember seeing this old Tony did a, a lever action elastic band shooter and I thought it was super cool. Didn't really have enough resources or sort of machine travel I guess to make one of those so I decided to go for a smaller um, revolver style and uh, this is what I ended up with. So let's, um, let's have a look at it. I'm also going to apologize ahead of time. The white balance on this video is probably going to be pretty nuts because it's reflective surface and I'm well, I'm not going to win any Oscars. So I just use these uh, elastic bands. Um, they're the thicker ones. I've actually found the thicker ones are probably too thick. It's kind of hard to load all four. I know the Colt Single Action Army is supposed to be a five shooter, but as we'll see, um, getting past four shots for a rubber band gun using this mechanism is actually quite difficult. So to load it, you just um, cock it. And uh, you'll notice the front sight is actually much too large, uh, considering what it actually looks like on the Colt Single Action Army. But it lets you hold lots of rubber bands, and then you just, you loop the rubber band over this escapement wheel. And then what you can do is you can pull that back to the next position, and then you can loop another rubber band on it, keep pulling it back until you end up with four. Once it's all loaded up, all you have to do is cock it like that, and it fires. So. That's pretty cool. I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, really fun project to make. Unfortunately, it was a rush job. Um, I decided I was going to make one of these about two weeks before Halloween. And uh, in addition to this, I had to make uh, saloon doors, a saloon sign. We had to set up a fake poker table. Um, yeah, we, we really go all out for Halloween on my team. Anyways, let's take it apart and see how it works. So this actually has a ton of uh, pins holding it together, so it's it's pretty much super over constrained. Um, not that it's any kind of kinematic system, it's not a huge deal, it just makes it a little slow to take apart. Um, a little bit of prying is required sometimes, but take off the, uh, the one side. You can see this is made in sort of a plate construction, because I was so pressed for time I just water jet a bunch of plates out, bolted them together, and that worked really well. So. There's a, a website called rbguns.com, and it's a guy who posts free plans for wooden rubber band guns. He does some really cool ones. He does the uh, sort of Winchester lever action style. He does some modern ones. I think he has a Glock or something. He basically just posts one-to-one -one size um, sheets of the cutouts you have to make, and the idea is you'd make them out of wood with a jigsaw, or I guess a router maybe. So he does have the Colt Single Action Army up. I didn't actually get a chance to use his plans. Uh, I looked around for some 3D models to make it a little easier. Like I said, I was pressed for time. Uh, and I actually found a guy on Thingiverse who I'll link to who made a 3D printable one. Although unfortunately that didn't do me any good either because um, for some reason the when I downloaded the models, the first problem is they came a thousand times too big. And then the second problem is that SolidWorks couldn't recognize any of the features so I couldn't select points, I couldn't convert entities, anything like that. So I ended up having to trace everything, rescale it manually. So I do feel that I did my fair share of work uh, designing this, even though it's not my original design. The other thing is uh, obviously the 3D printable slash 
um, wooden styles. You can do a lot of gluing, you can sort of 3D print big thick sections. I don't have a welder so I couldn't weld anything so a lot of these external details are actually epoxied on. Um, it would look really good if, uh, if you made one and it was welded. Uh, if you look at a, a real firearm, a real um, revolver style like this, the receiver is almost always forged. So you get as much sort of three-dimensional detail as you want out of that. Uh, and then past that, it's sort of a series of uh, finishing steps to, to fit all the precision components. But long story short, um, I wasn't going to 3D mill this part with a two-week lead time. So I just uh, did the external parts and uh, epoxied them on. That seems to work well. I did have some extra walnut lying around from a hatchet I made for my girlfriend uh, a year and a bit ago. Yeah, I didn't really write the book on relationships. So I actually just popped that in her laser cutter. Uh, it's important when you're laser cutting thick uh, hardwood especially that you give it um, sort of an extra millimeter on all sides. Because by the time you've blown through the, the wood, you've basically burned about a millimeter in, so it's pretty much charred. So you got to give yourself space to sand it. Um, so yeah, nothing too special here. I'm not much of a woodworker. I just, uh, yeah, cut it out, sanded it a bit. Um, yeah, I didn't even finish it, so, but that's good enough. So now we'll have a look at how the mechanism works. Um, basically, if you've ever looked at how a clock works, you'll recognize this mechanism here is basically just an escapement and an escapement wheel. So what happens is when you cock the hammer, there's going to be forward tension on this escapement wheel from the elastic band that's in it. When you release the hammer, it's actually going to hit this escapement here. The escapement is going to disengage, let this roll forward by uh, an eighth of a rotation, and then this spring is going to return it, which is going to let it index one position. So you're basically just taking a force that wants to release all of its power at once, and you're forcing it to index through step by step. and. Uh, that happens in clocks, that's how they meter out the, uh, the lowering mass. You'll have a, a mass that lowers and the pendulum will be connected to here and that'll click back and forth and it'll make the clock only move in discrete steps. So, escapement wheel. In this case, it makes sure that only one shot fires. So, I think that's a really neat mechanism. Now, theoretically, if you could double stack these, so if you could do all four and then go around and do four more, this would only let one shot at a time go. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that this can only hold four shots. So I was, <laughs> you know, being as detail oriented as I am, I guess, I wanted to see if I could make this a five shot because there's five positions in the cylinder, so why not? But if you think about it, for one of these positions to disappear completely, it has to rotate 90 degrees. And of course, breaking 360 degree up into nine degree increments gives you four. So if you imagine trying to do this with, uh, I don't know, a five or a six position escapement wheel like this, you'd quickly find that you'd really have to sort of tune these profiles on the back for them to only let one shot go at a time. Otherwise you'd have some sort of half fired shots that might like slip off and stuff. Um, long story short, four is basically the ideal number for the escapement wheel, so. So this is a machine part you'll see in all the plans from like rvguns.com and stuff. It's just a two-dimensional thing. I just decided to turn this uh, this shoulder on here. Uh, I want the rubber bands to have somewhere to rest. Unfortunately, it came back and bit me in this case because um, that extra diameter there reduces the number of rubber bands I can fit on here. So this can theoretically fit four and I can make it fit four, but it really does better with three. The fourth one always wants to slip off, especially with these thick bands, because they kind of build up. So, yeah, I would recommend either having a smaller shoulder or no shoulder there. The sear mechanism is pretty straightforward. So you've got a hammer here, and you've got a detent there, detent there. When you pull the hammer back, the trigger grabs it and holds it in that position. You'll notice the escapement and the trigger are actually sprung together. I don't think that's for any particular reason other than saving space. Um, you could get away with just having the escapement sprung to the frame and then the trigger sprung to the frame, but if you do it together like this, then you'll find that you can save a bit of space. So uh, I've got this big beefy spring on here on the hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this hammer is probably heavier than the hammer for an actual firearm. It just happens to be the spring that I had. It's not even, doesn't even fit that well. 
<laughs> I'll try to pick a spring for the Patreon plans that is maybe a little less powerful because you'll see when I fired it really hammers in. Um, and yeah, I don't need that really. Someone in the comments actually made a suggestion that would hopefully make my videos a lot less uh, cringy with Allen key footage of uh, designing things to have roughly the same Allen keys. So using button head M4s and socket head M3s, for example, because they both use a two and a half millimeter Allen key. So I'm going to work on doing that, but the hammer just fits on a pivot here. Nothing special. I didn't even put bushings or bearings or anything in here because it's a rubber band gun, uh, not a precision piece of equipment. The spring is actually fixed in this slot just using a set screw. Again, not a precision piece of equipment. I'm not too worried about proper mechanical design methodology here. So that's the hammer. Uh, the trigger is a little bit more complicated as parts go for this. I'm just gonna these have to come off together. You can see the trigger started out life as just a two-dimensional profile. Threw it in a vise and I milled the sides away. And I milled a little slot here and I actually pressed a dowel in on this one to hold the spring. And that seems to be working fairly well. So you'll see right here it's wearing away quite quickly. The stresses are actually really high if you look at where the hammer meets the sear like that. By the time it's about ready to fire, there's a very, very small area that's holding the sear force back. So it'll flick off and it'll slowly wear this away. That's basically the reason you wouldn't normally use aluminum for something like this, because yeah, that's going to wear out really fast. Other than that, yeah, pretty straightforward part. Needed some hand finishing. You can see I had to butcher it with a file because the internal clearances were kind of funny. So anyways, yeah, trigger. Um, this is the escapement. This is a very simple two-dimensional part. Cut a slot out in the bottom for the spring to sit in. Um, the original plans that I had actually, they used rubber bands on the inside. And the idea was to hook it around this thing. Uh, I didn't like that because that would need more clearance on the sides and I wasn't super into the idea of doing that. So just cut a slot and put a, another set screw in. Next up is the frame. The other side is basically exactly the same as this but it's got the pins pressed into it so when this goes together the pins uh, the pins do all the locating and also hold all the features together and i've got the countersunk screws that hold everything together um, so that's quite straightforward um, let's see what else the grip on the other side fits on exactly the same way so just socket head cap screws there so the engineering amongst you will notice that this is actually saw cut Mike six, um, which is a sort of highly stable, very flat aluminum alloy, not very strong, but you use it for things like tooling plates just happened to be what I had from the scrap bin. Uh, you can see this is all one piece and that was all just water jet out. The barrel is just solid aluminum. I just bored out the very end. This little small barrel thing on the side here is actually in the real firearm would be used to push the cartridges out and there would be a, little gate here for the spent casings to come out of. Unlike the revolvers you might have seen on TV, this is an older style and it wouldn't have broken in half to get at the cylinder and the cylinder wouldn't have flipped out. You basically load the cartridges from a gate and when they're all fired, there's a little plunger thing in here that pushes the spent casings out. So a little more, a uh, little more work intensive. One thing that bugs me, it's a little detail I missed out. The receiver forging would normally have a little flange here for this pivot to go in. Um, I just didn't get around to it, so there's a big empty space here, which looks really stupid. You can see that the ejector plunger thing, I guess, is, uh, is actually fastened from the back of this plate using a flathead screw. And then this plate is fastened to the front using a socket head cap screw. There is actually a feature here on the original gun, it's just the pivot for the cylinder, but I figured I could camouflage a fastening fe feature with that. So. The barrel is actually threaded into the frame here and I could get it out, but I don't want to mangle it with the wrong tools. I would normally get this out at work. I'd put it in the lathe, grip it with some rubber or something and just twist it. But for now, at least I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see, the last big thing I think is just the, uh, the foresight slash elastic band holder. Uh, once the barrel is threaded into the torque that I was happy with. I just put the whole thing in the mill, cut a slot, and I glued a uh, glued a little piece of aluminum in. So yeah, that's, um, that's basically my uh, 2018 Halloween rubber band prop. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed that sort of 
random fun little video thing. Um, I really enjoyed making it. One of the things I really enjoy about machining is being able to run off on these little tangents and just make stupid little projects that keep me entertained. Um, got a few more of those coming up. Uh, I'm working on uh, a design for something that's going to help me organize my Allen keys a little better. So I'll just show you a, a quick, uh, quick glimpse of that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this is 3D printed from Shapeways. It's uh, sort of higher detail than do-it-yourself 3D printers can do. Uh, you can see there's going to be some electronics in here. I'm not going to get into it yet, but I know it sounds kind of stupid to have like electronics in an Allen key holder, but honestly, this is going to be sort of a static installation, we'll call it, and uh, hopefully it'll be kind of funny. So yeah, the other thing is when this is ready, I'm going to make the uh, the parts for sale on uh, Shapeways. So if you want to make something similar, you can. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this, uh, I don't know, fun little video, I guess. I'm um, working away on the CNC lathe gearbox, and I'm hoping to do a video on that soon. Uh, I'm also going to do a video on my little Allen key holder thing. Yeah, I'm going to keep the videos coming, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Cheers. Hey, come on, man. What if I apologized? Wipe that smirk off your face. Now who's on a roll? You're in trouble now.